doing that. They're saying, why are you burning up your own neighborhood? What, what's your what's your answer to why why do you why is why would African Americans come into this neighborhood in their own neighborhood and torch them? Why not Rodale Drive? Like I say, the burning I feel came from like a low mentality and immaturity because I mean they ran in and took the goods and it wasn't that like they got together and said, Okay, let's burn you know. I mean, just it happened. basically one individual, you know, from the spirit of the moment, the excitement, you know, had his lighter or his gasoline or whatever, and just set a fire. And then once the fires were set, it spread like a trend. I mean, like they, I mean, everywhere else, every other place they looted, they was like, okay, we burnt it down over here, you know, just fuck it, like burn it all down, you know, and that's basically how it went. It didn't, you know, it wasn't a plan, like, you go in, oh, I said, take it out, Burning, and it's like okay, everybody's it's like out. A happening. Yeah, it's just like you know what's happening. Um, well, so then there's a, the other questions are they, they say that the uh, African Americans are out here in in uh, in the in, in the uh, uh, parish areas of South, of uh, Los Angeles, and uh, you can't trust them. Is there? These are uh, a lot of people. Let's say they're on this side of the. Uh, poverty line. And they're like, over here, they're making money, they're middle class and above. They got all this stuff going for them. They're sitting back there saying, well, you got you got African Americans out there in South Central LA. You got them out there in Crenshaw. You got them out there in Watts. And we can't do nothing for them. For one, we can't trust them. One, they won't listen. For two, they won't listen. Um, we got youth. You send them to school, they're not going to go. All they're going to do is get an opportunity, and they're going to burn stuff. No matter what nobody tells them, you can't do nothing with them. What do, you, what do you say to that? Well, basically, I mean, the environment the environment speaks for itself. I mean, you, you look around, you can look around now and see that this ain't no place that you really, that you would really want to live. I mean, you know, when it comes down to trusting, you know, the youth or the black people over in South Central LA, I mean, you can't trust nobody that you don't know. That's what I feel. And I mean, can't, the prop, I mean, the problem, it, it won't get bigger and it won't get smaller, but it just stay, you know what I'm saying? And it's feeding, it's feeding for a direction to go because right now the problem is confused because we got so many people saying that, okay, this is what we want to do. We want to stop paying this. We want to um, stop the graffiti on the buses. We want to stop the drug problem. Not, but that's just words, you know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't have nobody like really coming out here. So, so what? What's one thing that you think in this community that would stop things like riot, rioting from happening? Uh, what what thing would, would would get African Americans, youth, you know, uh, believing and and and, and uh, wanting to be a part of America and wanting to be a part of its success? What thing do you, that you can think of that would change things around? Or several things, just some idea. All right. For one, I feel that the ride was just totally blown out of proportion. It was, it was like the people that participated in the ride jumped on the bandwagon towards the Watts ride because the ride was started in Watts because of um, physical abuse. Okay, Rodney King. No, in Watts, the Watts ride. Oh, from back in the 60s? Or yeah. Okay, yeah. But this ride was started on a more like political, you know, type situation. We should have handled it in, you know, in the courtrooms. You mean like they didn't give justice to Rodney King? Yeah. And I mean, we should have handled it that way with the papers, the signatures, the um, the standouts, the marches, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We did it when King was here, and like I say, you know, when Martin Luther King came about, I mean, we had so much spirit. We wanted to do it. Now we have no King and no Malcolm. All the motivation is gone which I feel, instead of burning down everything, that should have inspired that motivation to get out here and say, you know, we ain't getting no justice burning this, burning our neighborhood down, you know what I'm saying? And now I know for a fact, a lot of people realize that now because you have no thrifties to go get no ice cream, you know, you know pay less shoe stores for the you know, low income family. And I mean, I feel that the riot situation is just a lot of immature people jumping on the bandwagon out there to get something free. I'm not going to cover up, be, cover up.
cover up for him because I'm black, or I'm from this community, but that's how I feel. I, you know, prevent this type of situation again is if we get somebody really strong, not just one somebody, but, you know, a group of people. Like, I realize, I mean, you gotta, it starts with the individual, but if you can get a certain motivation, it don't have to be a um, certain person, it don't have to be, it could be a certain song or a certain, a certain way of life, you know what I'm saying? But what we need is that type of motivation. You need a motivation that will, you know, wake us up and make us more aware and motivated instead of frustrated to come out and do stuff like this. No, there's one damn is that how desolate and, and empty the ghettos are and how there's no hope. You think you can show us that? You think we could go to places where you can show us how desolate it is here for some people? 